Hey guys, I had a theory for why I think the Great One's child children are always born stillborn. So first, the Great Ones in the trans-dimensional planes, they still can influence people in Yarnum. And they're able to impregnate women through whatever magic they do. They don't have to physically be there or do it like normal people do it. They just like bam, you're pregnant. <laughs> um, but when they do that, the baby always ends up not surviving, always born stillbirth. Um, first, um, Queen Yarnum, the city got her name from her. Even though she is a Fumerian who are considered to be superhuman, like a superhuman race, still couldn't give birth to a living child. If she couldn't give a birth to a child, I don't think a human female has any chance. I believe it has something to do with the placenta. Yes, the placenta. <laughs> My theory is that the humans or the Fumerian females is that human and Fumerian females simply don't have strong enough placentas to nourish the baby in the womb. My key piece of evidence for this to back up my theory is the orphan of Kos. The orphan appears to be a human great one offspring. The orphan wields its placenta in combat like a club and tears pieces off it to use as explosive projectiles. After it transforms, the placenta mutates into a weapon resembling a gigantic axe. But how is Kos able to live? Aren't all great baby like great one children born stillborn? The orphan of Kos was conceived differently. He wasn't gestating inside a Fumerian female nor a human female but inside of his mother who was a great one. He seems to be the first ever child with a human father and a great one mother and there are hints pointing to no other than German the first hunter being the father. You can see like I'll read from the wiki this crying when you hear um the orphan, he's crying. This crying is actually a distorted version of German's crying, heard in a rare dialogue. Oh, Lawrence, Master Willem, somebody help me, unshackle me, please, anybody. I've had enough of this dream. The night blocks all sight. Oh, somebody, please. Also connected to German in that after killing it, before the dream catches on fire, the doll will state that he is no longer restless in his sleep, implying that he was aware of the child's fate and it is and is at peace when he feels the curse is lifted. This implies that he was one of the hunters that desecrated the village but was made unable to enter the nightmare when he did, when he died, possibly because of the moon presence bound him to the dream instead of letting him meet that fate. This is supported by one of the promotional videos for the Old Hunters DLC, where we can see a character model dressed like German, child hunter set and top hat with a peg leg and the burial blade. So, just like how Great Ones impregnate female Fumerians and humans, it's not like they have a choice. Uh, Kos impregnated, impregnated herself 
um, again I'm not sure if it's a male or female I think they I'm not sure if they can take roles of both male and female I'm not sure if they even have gender um, but I'm just gonna say she just so it makes sense so she impregnated herself with German's seed soul essence whatever you want to call it so I believe that the reason German and Koss's child survived was because the great one was the one gestating the fetus and because the great ones are big have really large small and powerful her placenta would also be equally as big and powerful and could provide with enough nutrients for the child you might say how how do still births even happen so before I continue I'll first talk about why stillbirths happen Many stillbirths are linked to complications with the placenta. The placenta is the organ that links the baby's blood supply, you know how important blood is, to the mother and nourishes the baby in the womb. If there have been problems with the placenta, and one example of placental problems that causes stillbirth is insufficient blood flow to the placenta. We are made of the blood, undone by the blood. <laughs> Half of all stillbirths result from pregnancy disorders are conditions that affect the placenta. The placenta is an organ that develops in the uterus during pregnancy. The structure provides oxygen, nutrients to the growing baby. It also removes waste products from the baby's blood. The placenta attaches to the wall of the uterus and the baby's umbilical cord arises from it. And we know how important umbilical cords are. You need three in total to unlock the true ending. I simply just don't think a human female's placenta is big or strong enough to sustain the fetus. A great child's fetus. A great one's womb and placenta can easily provide for a fetus. And as another fact, stillborn babies are usually born perfectly formed, although they are often small. And... That is true in Bloodborne. Both Queen Yanam gives baby to gives birth to a baby-sized baby. You don't actually see it, but you see her baby carriage. Seems like a normal child, like a small toddler could fit in there. And Ariana gives birth to a non-hostile celestial child once the player defeats Mikolash in the host of nightmares. It's a small slug-like creature with no eyes. It kind of uh, resembles a tiny version of Ibritus, daughter of the cosmos. But when you take Koss's child, you see that he's, well, he's not perfect, He, but he is tall and somewhat proportional humanoid. And the lack of nutrients from the human mother's placentas might not be able to give the fetus what it needs, so it's born dwarfed. And not to mention the physical limitations, the human mothers won't be able to physically birth a child that grows that big. And maybe somehow some weird mystical eldritch truth kind of thing, the baby knows it can't grow too big or will just end up rupturing the mother's stomach or womb and killing the mother completely. Uh, but again, that's another hit. Um, I'll explain what the functions of the placenta and why I think it could be a reason. But once you re uh, see this video, um, it's just going to match perfectly. This video almost perfectly, the way the guy says it, almost completely matches the theory I'm trying to come up with. Um, this video is from Zero to Final's YouTube channel and its functions of the liver. I mean, functions of the placenta. It explains my point, and I highly recommend you watch it completely. By on your, the link will be in the description. It's only seven minutes long, and it will give you a better example. It will just prove what I'm trying to, not prove, it will just try to reinforce what I'm trying to say. I'll just quickly summarize the point he made. Okay, so this is a diagram from the video itself. So the baby is connected via the umbilical cord to the placenta. The placenta has two umbilical arteries. That's the blue helix looking arteries you see here. 
and they carry deoxygenated blood away from the baby. And you have one umbilical vein that carries the oxygenated blood back to the baby, from the placenta to the baby. That's the big red one inside of the two umbilical arteries. Okay, next, you have the maternal arteries, which is the red, and the maternal veins, which is the blue. And these arteries and veins feed into the intervenous space, if I'm saying that correctly. Oh, and you won't believe it. This guy calls this area pools of paternal blood. It doesn't get more bloodborne than that. Next is the umbilical arteries and the umbilical vein. These are the root like structures you see inside the pools of maternal blood. The fetal blood and the pools of maternal blood don't actually mix. They're separated by a patern sorry, a placental membrane. Uh, it's basically like a filter. I think he says um, diffusion. So through the placental membrane, the fetal blood can pass through to the maternal blood and the maternal blood can pass through the fetal blood. Almost like a, basically like a filter, but it's called diffusion, I think. Yes, it is. Now, I'll quickly go over the five functions of the placenta. Again, you can watch the video. You'll go into details about each one. First, it's the respiratory function. Because you're in the womb, you're covered in, like, fluid. You can't breathe. So... It kind of breathes for you. It sends it deoxygenates your blood and reoxygenates your blood. And again, watch the video if you want more detail. The next function is called excretion. It's kind of like a kidney. Um, kind of like filters out stuff in the blood, making sure everything is at its proper levels. Basically like how your kidney filters stuff. And the next one is nutrition. Um, when the mother eats, it goes into the maternal blood and the glucose and micronutrients from the mother passes to the maternal blood and from the maternal blood goes to the fetal blood. And the next function is the immunity function. This is antibodies that the mother possesses that gets passed down to the child so the child stays safe and immune. The person in the video mentioned specifically herpes. If the mother has herpes constantly or many times in the past, she will pass the antibodies needed to protect her child. This also hits a bell. In Bloodborne, there is a prostitute. Her name is Ariana. She's a pivotal character, and from her you get one of the umbilical cords you need to get the true ending. I mention this because, because Ariana is a prostitute and herpes is a commonly sexually transmitted infection marked by genital pains and sores and her profession makes her more likely to contract this. Again, I'm not saying she has it, I'm just saying she's more likely to have it and just a little connection. And the fifth and last function is the endocrine. It produces hormones that help maintain the pregnancy. One of the hormones it's called human coronic catatrophin or HCG. <laughs> the next hormone is estrogen. This hormone keeps everything soft and elastic. So everything, for example, when you're giving birth to the baby, everything you know, works and it's nothing's rigid or you know what I mean. And the last hormone is progesterone. This is to keep the pregnancy maintained and keep the uterus nice and relaxed. These are the five functions of the placenta. Now, if any one of these five functions are not working, which I believe might be the case for human and for females, that could explain why 
the babies are always born stillbirth. But in the case of German and Koss's child, Koss took care of all the physical labor and having a placenta proportionate to her size as well, being stronger, could be the reason why the orphan of Koss survived. But that's it. That's my little theory. Um, I might be wrong, <laughs> which I probably am. So I might be missing some crucifixion evidence that might completely disprove anything I just said. But um, if there is any of that, just comment it down. And um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys liked it. Mm, yep. Away! Away!